The Humbling is an excellent weekly 40 Outlast Trials, which is pure survival mode as it reduces your maximum health drastically as well as your inventory, especially on psychosurgery difficulty. Now the main idea is to strip us down to our truest self to find out who we are and there's a problem with that because for me who I am means being the most masochistic gamer imaginable for this game and doing a really dumb challenge once again. So that's what I did. Again, but don't worry this time I restrained myself from going all out and only did the challenge in one trial poison the medicine For one this trial has not been highlighted much on the channel yet And I will admit there wasn't too much mental fortitude there to go through all of them the challenge you may ask Well, actually, it's quite simple We play the trial on an account with zero upgrades on psychosurgery difficulty also, my shift key may or may have not died, so no running today, which to be honest is only fair for the poor souls I'm about to style on. Small jumps without shift or vaulting are still fair game though. Either way, let's begin. The beginning of the trial is in a very weird spot compared to other ones. There's the big guy beating up this corpse in a very inconvenient path as well as the small guy patrolling the train tracks and while everything is lit up and we are very visible when seen, it is still not too bad. So we snuck around and reached the control center to lift the crane, watched some piñata action made it to the drug laboratory. We got seen by another big guy on the way but the TikTok attention span of these things once we entered the lab made him gave up on us rather quickly, thank god. The put heroin into machine segment is by far the easiest segment in this trial. It's a certified stealth segment in almost pure darkness with a small guy patrolling, putting drugs back and forth. Yes, sometimes the RNG gods weren't kind and they gave me lots of doors to bash, which with 3 hits without prescriptions I sometimes refused to not draw attention to myself. Or sometimes a combination of pouncers and lasers forced me to use the bathroom which I normally never do but AA can at least then boop the lovely duck for good luck. Either way not to spoil too much but I never remotely failed or died in this segment. With a bit of patience to not get catched off guard by the small guy patrolling I succeeded in this part 100% of the time. Wish I could say the same about pushing the car to the train station and back though. This part is by far the hardest the trial has to offer. The first part features the same small guy from the last segment becoming a menace trying to catch you pushing the cart. Luckily the cart itself is the best cover you can have to hide from in. Doesn't change the fact that whenever I could push through that, I was absolutely uncomfortably sweating balls, but we are trying to make the best of it. Now the actual train station is very hard to gauge on how hard it is. First it is worth pointing out something that I neglected to mention so far and that since we are a level 1 character and have all the variators attached to us that we only have one inventory slot to use and this very slot will be occupied with the code decipher device for this entire segment so no break or bottle for self defense. The place itself is alright navigation wise as there is a lot of darkness to benefit from but the enemies in the sector, especially Franco, while sometimes not being an issue at all, sometimes have a natural talent to smell me and beeline my position. Also regarding the symbols, we are mostly unlucky as lots of the upstairs ones are in the milky bright area where we can easily be seen in court. Luckily for me this attempt was one of the easier ones to decipher, especially since Frank cleared the path to acquire it. Thank you so much buddy. 
Getting the heroin to the cart is also a task on its own. For most attempts I opted to actually go all the way around in a dark area rather than crossing the bright path directly just to be safe which ended up saving me more times than I can count. With all the drugs loaded I entered what can be best described as the tightest airport security bullshit I've ever seen and therefore the worst part of the mission. There are three enemies to worry about while trying to push the cart back to the laboratory. Franco who just chills at the station and sometimes takes pock shots at you when you start pushing, a big guy in the adjacent fishing hut segment going his merry race and the same small guy chilling around the drag lab because Coming a nuisance again. And the best part is when one turns his back on you, the other might not and you have to really create perfect opportunities to make the push. Or you are just cracked like me and abuse this bunch of god pallets harder than you could ever do in DBD. Luckily pushing the cart slowly has the advantage to be very quiet, but it doesn't change that I had to constantly stop and reassess if someone is about to approach and I also had to check my flanks 24-7 despite not playing a first person shooter. And if you haven't guessed it yet, this is where I failed for the first time. I tried to juke the small guy on around the lab area but failed after a failed vault and therefore there's the end of that. Still good first attempt though. Attempt 2 was an interesting one as it highlights what type of chaos can await you at the first walking lifting crane section. It took me longer than usual to get to the piñata party, so Frank spawned right in front of me and chased me which without running is very awkward and he caught me and gassed me. Luckily, I'm, I mean very skillfully, I found an antidote adjacent to the disaster and recovered. I tried to skill my way out the same way when the big gal here saw me and even tried to go around the way around to great distance, but she caught up with ease and after whiffing a few times put this attempt to rest. Short lived, but still very action packed. At least way more action packed than attempt 3 I would say. We lifted the crane, made it to the lab and delivered the first two heroin packs without issue. We pushed the car to the train section and even managed to fill up the cart without much trouble either. However, again, this changed with the airport security. You know, one effective way to get rid of the big guy temporarily is to throw a bottle at the end of the Fisher Hut thing, with the door closed for maximum distance and time. This time, I threw it at a pillar and got immediately asked a question for it. Tough luck. Attempt 4 was a sign that the attempts will go worse and worse from here. Have you ever played Dark Souls and fought a boss, had a good attempt and then the next 10 attempts after that will magically be significantly worse? Yeah, the same type of feeling started to walk in, not only with attempt 4, but also attempt 5. Granted, dodging the small guy who saw us was pretty epic, if only short lived, and after being stepped on properly failing the very next run while trying to push the car to the train station, it showed that a reset was needed. We were not really getting anywhere with this. So after taking a proper overwatch and DVD brain rot break, I decided to boot up the game once more, restored and locked in. At least as locked in as you can be when crippling around like a snail without upgrades. And managed to come out better on top than before. Okay, after being milked in the milk segment. But the attempt after that. I managed to achieve new heights and with that the best attempt yet. Ironically attempt 7 started with yet another incident in the crane lift segment similar to attempt 2. Get Caught off guard like that 
wasn't enough to break my spirit though and I managed to proceed to the drug lab, put the heroin in the cooker and even evaded the small guy successfully while managing to push the car to the train station once more. The symbols this run were quite a blessing so much so that I stupidly grew confident to take the bright path only to be taught why I never took it in the past. Hmm? You want my I'm glad that I barely survived that encounter with only one eighth of a shotgun pellet hitting my body, but that was way too close for comfort. When pushing back to the lab, I distracted the big guy, as I mentioned earlier, to push past his area, only to be caught by the small guy at the lab. However, this time, it was decided it shall be different and I managed to successfully juke him and after more patience I actually pushed the cart all the way to the lab and with a little more of patience the cooker was successfully filled and I reached a new personal best. However, the part coming up next scared me as it was the no sniffer part with the gas. Now you can stay in it for about 20-ish seconds and the size of my health bar still meant I could pull in the area and pull out in emergencies without dying immediately, but walking at snail pace was still intimidating. That being said, my worries regarding the gas were rather unfounded. We got very good RNG on the poison canisters, abused the living hell out of the non-gas zone in front of the shutter gate and were able to manage to pull them out one by one. We got the second potion upstairs so no night hunter to deal with and the small guy patrolling could easily be dealt with using the door lock and a well thrown bottle and we left the gas facility in no time. Getting the poison canisters to the cooker themselves was a task on its own however and a big patience game. Not trying to get caught by either the small guy in the lab or the big guy who now patrols the boat proved challenging and caused me to play a very long waiting game for the perfect opportunity. This dark area adjacent to the cart track is perfect for this as neither enemy actually patrols directly on it so it was a good safety spot to think about my next move. Also this locker in the cooker room is a true MVP in staying in one piece thank you to the RNG gods. After filling the cooker and producing the drugs with no resistance surprisingly, it was time for the ultimate walk of shame. You know, having to do an objective to hide 6 pieces of drugs with only one inventory slot is definitely not something I want to repeat anytime soon. Now in contrary to how I normally handle things, I decided to trigger the final showdown immediately as between picking all the previous enemies including a screamer or Franco who also chills in the boat's cargo, I thought the second option was better. Now when triggering this event I immediately hit in the green double locker, so even though Franco gets mad shooting the window, he immediately loses us which is vital to our success. And after that followed a 20 to 30 minute session of waiting for perfect opportunities to get one drug after another on the ship and then downstairs into the cargo hold. We were close to getting caught sometimes, but at the end of the day, while I was sweating hard from an outsider's perspective, this was incredibly boring because of how little chances I took and for how long I waited for perfect moments. But at the same time, this is the winning recipe to most of the Outlast Trials challenges I've done in the past. Patience. After the deeds were done, I made my way to the exit through the train station, followed Franco while patrolling, threw a bottle for safety and made it out of this hellish of a challenge in one piece. And there you have it, Poison the Medicine, the humbling weekly, beaten on psychosurgery at level 1 without running and without using any health sickness pills either. 
I want to take this opportunity to all people watching this far to thank you for sticking around, especially recently when things were rough for me. I made a community post around it. It's getting better, but it's still ongoing. Thank you so much for understanding and your patience. Also, thank you so much for watching this video. It's definitely different to how I normally do challenges, but it was fun to do regardless. If you enjoy, make sure to drop a like and subscribe for more of us content in your future. And if you still want to see the full uncut successful attempt, there's a video for that linked in the description. And other than that, have a great rest of your day and take care everyone. Bye bye.